My name is Ellen Copson. I'm an Associate Professor of Medical Oncology and Honorary Consultant, and I'm also Cancer Lead for the 100,000 Genomes Project down in Wessex. Ultimately, cancer is a genetic disease. We know that it's changes in the DNA of a cell that can cause it to grow in a non-controlled manner and become cancerous. We now understand that each cancer cell has between 1,000 to 10,000 somatic mutations within its DNA. With next generation sequencing and the use of panel tumour tests, we can now get information about genomic changes in a range of different genes all at the same time. Therefore, oncologists are now being presented with more genomic data about an individual and their cancer than we've ever had before. We are predominantly using information from the genomic sequence of the cancer cell to identify which drugs a cancer patient may get most benefit from. But we can also use genomic information from the germline of the patient to identify patients who have an underlying cancer susceptibility syndrome or a particular sensitivity to certain chemotherapy drugs. We are now analysing the genomic sequence of patients with certain types of lung cancer. If they have an EGFR mutation, we know that they will have a high chance of responding to a drug called gefitinib. In colorectal cancer, we are looking for patients with a mutation of the RAS gene because we know that these patients are unlikely to benefit from certain types of targeted therapies such as cetuximab. In breast cancer, we are now frequently analysing the tumour, not just for one mutation, but for the expression of a range of different genes in order to identify which tumours are likely to be aggressive in nature and have a high chance of relapse these patients will then stand to benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy treatment, but we can also identify the patients that don't need to undergo chemotherapy. Genomics is a really powerful tool in oncology, but there are certain things we have to be aware of. Firstly, the presence of a particular genomic marker will predict a response to a certain treatment, but it doesn't provide a 100% guarantee. In addition, we know that as cancers spread, Mutations can frequently change, and this can result in resistance to targeted therapies or a mixed response to treatment. Finally, we know that some targeted drugs have very different effects in different tumours, so it's still important that we gather information from clinical trials to teach us how best to use these drugs. We know from experimental work that has been done that we get much better quality of genomic sequencing if we use tumour samples that are fresh frozen rather than stored in formalin. This has real implications for how we design cancer diagnostic pathways for our patients. Newer technologies are now allowing us to pick up tiny circulating amounts of cancer DNA in the blood and this paves the way for tests that will potentially identify cancer at a much earlier stage in the disease process. As a medical oncologist, we see patients with all different types of cancer. Genomics is a really exciting aspect of cancer care, so it's really important that oncologists embrace it so that we can ensure that our patients really do benefit from these advances.